Okay. Hello, everybody. It's um, March 2nd. This is our first lecture in ITS 631. We'll be going over uh, just the highlights of Chapter 1 and 2 in both the Langer and the Bourgeois texts, uh, going over some key points. And then um, the assignments for this week, you've got three total assignments. We'll go over the, uh, uh, the instructions and the points for those. Um, uh, I've got a lot of slides here. It's a, f a fair amount of reading, four chapters uh, in a week, but in an accelerated um, format like this, where you're doing uh, an entire course in half the time, uh, it's to be expected. So you'll be putting a lot of hours in um, uh, reading the text, looking things up online, uh, considering your answers to the uh, study questions and exercises and the discussion board. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first, uh, we'll, we'll do the, the bourgeois chapters one and two, and then we'll talk about Langer. The, the approaches to these two texts are, are quite different um, and, and interesting. The uh, information systems for business and beyond is really uh, just a good overview. Things you've probably studied um, in your undergraduate uh, degree programs and and things you see uh, in the industry around you. Um, so a lot of it will be just a review. Um, but the the Langer text is uh, is interesting as it puts information technology sort of in an organizational context and and uh, how IT identifies how how we as IT professionals behave and how we organize and and think of ourselves um, within the the larger company. Uh, especially as things get more and more and more complex and, and dependent on IT. So two interesting textbooks. Uh, the, the first one here, um, we'll just kind of blast through. Like I said, it's mostly review. You've seen most of this before. Um, we'll, uh, I do want to highlight what an information system is. Uh, some people mistakenly think an information appliance is a system, um, but it's not really, it's not really a, an end user. Um, and we'll we'll go over <laughs> the history of information systems. Um, I'm embarrassed to say that I actually worked through a fair amount of this um, in the last 32 years in information technology. And um, and we'll talk about does IT matter? That that that's a, a an interesting article. It's being used a lot in in different courses um, because of the changing role of IT. So this is just chapter one of the first text. Um, you know, uh, as we said. Uh, it changes constantly. Um, I want you to make sure that you understand an information system is uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, system of computers, data, people, processes. It's not just a laptop or just a tele, uh, you know, a, a smartphone um, or a tablet or an application. Some people think their email is an information system. Uh, it might be a component of an information system, but uh, we're really talking more about, you know, enterprise information systems like supply chain management or customer resource management, uh, those sorts of things, uh, ERP systems. Um, so there's your definitions. Just make sure that you, you, uh, you're, you're looking at information systems in the broader picture that way. Um, and of course we have, you know, the, the layers of an information system you've got, uh, can't do anything without the hardware really. And even if you're in the cloud, there's hardware up there <laughs> that, uh, that the cloud's running on. So you've got, then you've got the operating system, Windows, Chrome, Android, iOS, whatever it may be, the, the various applications we run, and then the most important thing, us, the users uh, on the information system. Then you've, of course, you gotta have a network component hooking it all together. Um, uh, so that's, that's really more what we're talking about is the end-to-end uh, the -end process like that. Um, uh, this is a, a good chart. Goes back into the uh, the, the history where uh, when you worked on a on a computer, it was a building size computer, and you uh, you tapped along on a on a screen that just only displayed characters, and the data was in the mainframe, and the application was in the mainframe, and the user permissions were in the mainframe, and mainframes barely talked to each other, and if they did, it wasn't really um, in real time like like uh, the modern era with a lot of overnight batch file processing. And then it evolved into, you know, PCs, a lot of things getting done on PCs. 
Uh, of course, the internet exploded in the mid '90s, and and then ten years later, the mobile world exploded with the iPhone and Android, and um, and and now it's getting to be very difficult um, uh, to tell where your data is. Um, you you expect to be able to to access your data from any device anywhere that you have internet connectivity, and um, and this this chart does a good job of walking through uh, more or less the uh, the evolution. And again, there's much more in your books. Um, uh, of course, these are you know uh, the the basic basic truths of IT um, makes you more efficient, more effective, uh, and really uh, it, it's a it's a, a cost of doing business. Now you you virtually can't compete um, unless you have some automation. If you don't sell online, it's it's very tough. Even small shops uh, to do their accounting, they they waste too much time. Um, tracking inventory and doing accounting and all of that uh, manually. So um, even even the smallest uh, sole proprietorship has a computer helping uh, helping run the business for them. Um, and this Nicholas Carr IT doesn't matter. Uh, um, we'll see what you guys think. I'm I'm not I'm not so sure we're there yet, but I do see his point. It's getting to be where um, software as a service and and uh, other cloud cloud-based services are getting to be so uh, user-friendly and easy that it's almost like turning on a light switch um, and boom, you have light. Well, it's almost like turning on accounting and finance or turning on uh, HR like you would turn on the water tap. Um, so we'll see what you guys think about that. Um, I don't, I don't think we're there yet. I think, I think there's still a lot of complexities and, and disjointed and dirty data and, non-compatible systems and, and issues so that uh, um, we're getting there, but we'll see if, if you agree with Nicholas Carr or not. And then uh, uh, the second chapter of the bourgeois text um, gets into the hardware. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you guys do the reading on this. I think um, most of our, for most of us are fairly familiar with uh, CPUs and, and uh, the different types of end user devices and peripherals. So just make sure you um, you, you read that and um, and you have the current jargon um, uh, loaded, as well as you know uh, the the trends. We're kind of moving away from um, from any sort of uh, like CD-ROMs or floppy disks or even thumb drives. Um, pretty much everything is getting to be cloud-based now. We we share files and data much more commonly um, with like Google Drive or OneDrive or something like that than we do uh, with, a, with a piece of media like a floppy disk or a DVD-ROM. So just make sure you brush up on all those hardware terms. Um, there's a little bit of work on this um, in your homework. Um, and of course, uh, you, you need to know a little bit about binary uh, at the root of, of uh, the computer computer science um, hardware world. Uh, all computers eventually are processing uh, ones and zeros until we eventually get to uh, the next generation. So make sure you read that sidebar, uh, understanding binary. If you if you don't already, I think most of us already get that, and we use the ASCII table as a a frame of reference for why binary eventually uh, stands for something more understandable, like a, uh, a an English letter. Um, and then of course, you know, the tour of the PC, Moore's law, Huang's law, uh, things getting cheaper, 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 faster, better. Um, incredible. The, uh, the amount of change I paid a hundred dollars for two, one megabit Ram chips <laughs> about 25 years ago. Uh, just crazy how cheap uh, memory has gotten over the years. And it will continue um, until we reach some some sort of plateau, but we're we're not there yet. And of course, uh, graphic processes are getting better and better, and you're getting um, movie quality uh, video games, uh, just amazing advances in hardware. And um, these are getting to be less. Uh, these hardware components are getting to be less important. Um, I mean, ten years ago, I was still building a PC occasionally and expanding things with video cards and memory and, and, um, the hardware part of things was, 
it was a, an interesting hobby. You could, you know, overclock things and, and, um, and now it's getting to be where you pretty much buy an all, an all in one computer and, and a tablet or a phone or a laptop. And, and you don't, you don't tweak the hardware so much as, as you did in the earlier days of the PC, but these terms are still relevant. And, um, especially on the server side where you, you uh, you will still, uh, occasionally work with, with the hardware like this. Um, uh, make sure you, uh, you understand all of these there. Uh, again, they're on your homework at the end of chapter two. Um, uh, one thing about Bluetooth I wanted to point out, it's make sure you, if you, if you aren't familiar with the protocol, the Bluetooth protocol, um, make sure you, uh, you read the section on that and maybe even, um, watch an introductory uh, video on YouTube. Uh, Bluetooth lets devices teach each other, um, about themselves and maybe what, what sort of, um, functions they have. And, and even, you know, a Bluetooth device could tell your phone, um, what sort of, uh, buttons it has to control it. So there's a, there's a discovery process there that, um, that makes it far smarter than just a, a wireless protocol. It's, it's, it's far more than just being able to, uh, you know, to beam your television, your, your telephone conversation to your earbud or stream your music to your external speaker. Um, and, uh, we, yeah, we're not, we're, we're not really, really using Bluetooth, uh, to its full capability just yet. So, uh, there's, you know, your list of typical input and output devices, make sure you know those. And, uh, um, here's your, your, your measurements of performance in hardware. Uh, again, it, it can matter, uh, depending on what line of, of, um, where you're at in information systems. Uh, if you're in the software application side of things, you don't normally uh, worry so much about this. But uh, if you're getting more into double E or computer engineering, it certainly does. And then as we're moving into um, uh, into the future, you're starting to see more and more and more and more different devices connected to the internet. Um, you know, uh, it's not really mentioned here, but uh, smart televisions uh, have applications on them now. Um, so you got, you know, the smart TV, you can stream to the TV from your phone. And of course, you know, all the different audio devices, input devices, um, things like Alexa, personal digital assistants that are voice activated that stream back to your main account and let you manipulate data just using your voice, uh, home security systems. We, we've all seen the, uh, the vulnerabilities with the, uh, the ring, uh, Amazon's, um, uh, home monitoring cameras. Uh, so we're getting more into this internet of things, all these different devices, uh, coming together to provide capability and, and, and data, so much data being generated, uh, by all these devices that, uh, individual people and companies have to manage. So that's, uh, that's chapter one and two of bourgeois, just a, a good, uh, overview grounding of, uh, of, uh, information systems, fundamentals, and then hardware. And then next week we get into the software chapter of that and, and then more examples of things. So moving on to Langer, this one's a little bit different. Uh, it's a little, little more philosophy and, and, uh, how, it, how, uh, organizations learn using information systems, how, how organizations share information via like uh, enterprise social media, and wikis and blogs and knowledge management systems. Um, so make sure you give Langer a, a, a good read because uh, it's not necessarily a basic fundamental facts like you'll find in um, information systems for business and beyond the bourgeois text. Um, so again, we're just going to run through a couple things here to point out. Um, uh, you'll you'll have exercises in both bourgeois and Langer for your homework, uh, and uh, of course, let me know if you have any questions with it. But so uh, this, again, this is the relationship book about IT and and how we function as information professionals within an organization, and uh, uh, you'll you'll see this case study, this Ravel Corporation, throughout the book. Um, so you'll you'll one of your, your your biggest assignments is a is a case study this. Um, a portfolio project. Uh, so make sure you're kind of using this Ravel Corporation as a as a guide 
for uh, working through a more extensive uh, assignment involving an, an organization and its IT folks. Um, so again, read, read through Langer. Um, he's got a lot of different uh, learning, organizational learning theories. Um, as we enter into class discussion, um, I'd be interested to see your response of, of how um, any of these examples apply to your, your current work um, and where you're at. Um, we do a lot of this in software, you know, single and double loop learning where we, we have feedback mechanisms on our feedback mechanisms to make sure that we're, we're learning as we move through uh, day to day. And uh, there's a lot in Langer about being an IT leader. Any, anytime in any organization you're in IT, you, you are somewhat of an ambassador. Um, so you, there's, there's some things to avoid, you know, jargon and, and being too complex or unapproachable or anything like that. So Langer goes into a lot of those relationship sort of uh, facets of being an IT professional that I, I think are pretty interesting. Um, th this resistance in the ranks, um, I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen where you bring in a new system um, and people don't like change. There's, uh, there's a, a, a information systems theory out there called the technology acceptance model um, that goes into this sort of dynamic a little bit more detail. Um, but uh, yeah, um, give this a read. We'll, I'll, I'll be looking for your, your, um, um, your assessment of uh, resistance in the ranks in your homework. Um, but you know, if there's anything that's always changing, it's IT. Um, a lot of the other things in life, traffic, commuting, uh, watching television, you know, things haven't, haven't changed so much. But at work um, and, and in entertainment, um, information technology changes all the time. So uh, resistance to change can be really detrimental to an organization. And Langer goes into ways to, uh, to move forward through those sort of, those sort of hurdles. Um, and he's, there, there are key lessons in chapter uh, one that is part of your... Um, part of your homework. I'll be looking for your reflection on, on those key lessons and particularly why they're so important. And please put these in context of your own personal work uh, experience, personal professional experience. Um, we all have the book. Um, so please don't, you know, don't just rephrase what we're seeing in the book. Um, make it a little more conversational and, and, and informative. Uh, based on your your professional experience, and then chapter two of Langer. So yeah, again we've got four chapters this week. Um, we'll be going uh, talking about the importance and and the role of technology, and and as an IT leader, you know you're you're in a master's degree program. You, you know maybe eventually you'll get a doctorate, um, and you'll become business leaders, lead programmers, lead database developers, uh, business analysts, and you've, you've got to learn to, uh, to relate what you're doing in IT to the functions of the business and how it either you know, improves processes, makes things more efficient, or if it's the product uh, that your company is selling, if you're a solutions provider, solutions developer, um, you've got to... Uh, um, be able to communicate how you're doing it effectively, efficiently, staying ahead of the competition, those sorts of things. And, uh, and really, if, if the only people you talk to and hang out with are your fellows in the IT squad, um, you, you probably are selling yourself a little short. You're not uh, maybe uh, learning as much as you could about the organization. Um, try, not to, try not to live your life insulated within IT, um, regardless of, of, you know, even if you're a solutions developer, get to know the sales folks. They're the people out on the street selling your product um, to and dealing with clients. Um, that's really where the, you know, the, the value of what you're doing is shows itself. Um, so make sure you're getting, you know, you're, you're getting out into the functional areas, whether it's HR, uh, business and finance, and, and you're learning more about just 
just uh, IT and uh, how to integrate yourself uh, more in the within the business. Um, and of course, you know, uh, IT. There are there are companies that are going through um, a um, business process reengineering phase to reinvent themselves because they they were able to get by in the uh, in the old analog world for so long. Um, but now uh, they're they're really coming to grips with the fact that um, the, the 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 businesses in their uh, in their sector, in their vertical, that use IT most efficiently and effectively are going are going to win, whether it's the way they do supply chain management or heck, even in in the trucking industry, uh, how they do fleet management, load management, those sorts of things. Um, that you, they will get past. People will do things faster, cheaper, um, if if you don't leverage IT. And uh, and integrate it well into your organization. Um, as as a, a an IT professional, you you might um, have the opportunity to develop uh, an IT strategy that feeds into the business strategy. Um, so and there are there are many ways that that can go depending on the the, the business's strategy. It may be um, to expand, and they have many 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 little satellite. Uh, offices and your IT strategy has to has to be able to handle rapid provisioning of IT services to small locations. It could be that your business is one monolithic location. Uh, it could be that the strategy is to uh, to buy out a competitor and merge the two different enterprises, which can be um, which can be difficult um, if both companies, have different uh, different databases, different applications, different architectures. Um, so we'll we'll go into into uh, nesting your IT strategy within the, lar the larger corporate strategy um, as we move through the course. Um, but again, th this Langer text is big picture. Um, I'm, I'm, I hope you 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 give it its its due. This is really uh, the Langer text to, to me is really more graduate work where you you get beyond the, the the basics of IT and basics of coding and hardware and those sorts of things. And you really start to look at uh, information technology as a, a functional area uh, of an organization. So yeah, I really hope you're given this, this uh, Langer text. It's, it's due time. Um, so uh, yeah, again, uh, the relationship, the Langer is all about the relationship of IT. Um, and organizational control. You have to decide if you want to put IT more centralized, and uh, there's there are arguments for 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 doing that. Um, but then there are also arguments for for spreading IT expertise out a little bit out among the the field units. Um, so you have to uh, you have to decide how that's going to work, and then. Um, in the support role, how how the organization interacts with IT in order to either just you know get tech support um, or if it's to uh, to 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 provide um, um, requirements for the next iteration of your enterprise information systems. Um, so many uh, organizational uh, elements uh, to look at in the Langer text. Um, and then again, business strategy. And ways of looking at, at IT, you know, the, the, the return on investment, ROI, um, how much you're, you're willing uh, to put into IT, how often your tech refresh has to come. Um, is, do you have a, a pool of money that is uh, emerging technologies as things come out? Um, you don't even know what you're going to spend this money on in a couple of years. Um, so you have to have uh, uh, different ways of, of evaluating IT and, and, and what you're willing to, uh, to put in the investment pool. And then um, uh, how, do you, you know, how do your company executives view IT? You can, if, if, you, if you listen to them and watch them, you can, you can sort of tell what the overall um, – attitude is toward IT and it doesn't hurt to look at the backgrounds 
um, you'll you'll very often see people that are not computer scientists uh, becoming chief information officers um, because they they understand the the role of IT as a support mechanism, not um, an end in and of itself. Um, so uh, Langer goes into a little bit about the executive uh, relationship to IT and their vision and insights on IT. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'd be, be curious. Uh, it, it would be interesting for all of you to look at the uh, the senior leadership, uh, the, the board of directors, and and the C level executives, chief technology officer, chief technology officers. Very often, uh, as the name implies, a, a technologist, but but the chief information officer very often is not. It's more of it comes out of the business units, and he knows uh, and she knows um, what IT does for the business and uh, either saving it money or making it money. Um, so make sure you're reviewing those uh, those tables in the second chapter of Langer. And, uh, and here are your week one assignments. So we've got three assignments for a total of 55 points. Uh, first one is a, just a, a real simple uh, discussion board. And uh, for something like this, five points, you know, a couple of paragraphs, introduce yourself, um, let us know uh, where you're working, what you're doing, um, what your uh, undergrad is in, and um, and then part two of that discussion is is uh, discussing resistance to change uh, within the organization. So uh, be original. Uh, a lot of this stuff is available out on the internet, as I said in my welcome uh, lecture, um, my welcome recording. Um, a lot of this stuff is available on study.com and coursehero.com and, and maybe in previous courses. Uh, but don't, don't submit anything, write everything from scratch. Uh, if you, and from a blank piece of paper. Uh, so type everything out yourself. Don't, uh, don't cut and paste and reword or reformat or anything like that. Everything you write for this course, uh, you, you need to be writing, uh, one hundred percent in your own words and phrases and paragraphs um, so no no paraphrasing, no rewording no uh, none of that. I want to see one hundred percent original brand new uh, verbiage so uh, yeah the on, on the discussion board it 's real quick. introduce yourself and then talk about resistance to change and and uh, how that can affect the culture of an organization, particularly focusing on i t and then you 've got um, two uh two other homework assignments um that would that will be turned in as as a, a word document um two separate word documents for two separate assignments um there you've got some study questions and review exercises uh from bourgeois and then langer chapter one and two um uh, some deeper thinking um, I, I would expect you to spend a little more time on Langer than you do on Bourgeois. But uh, again, this is going to take hours and hours of your time. Um, uh, I actually have a, uh, an adult son who's getting his MBA that had to not come visit because schoolwork is taking up too much time. Uh, so there will be, I know there's, there, there will be sacrifices. I, I, I certainly sacrificed uh, my time with family and, and my hobbies and everything. Um, uh, when I was getting, uh, my undergraduate, graduate and doctoral degree. So it's going to take hours, uh, and it takes time and effort, but nothing worth doing is easy. Uh, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So I look forward to your best work. And again, uh, original, uh, type everything in your own words. Um, and, and we talked about article spinning and paraphrasing websites and, and all those sort of things. So uh, use good conversational, common uh, English phrasing and, uh, and write your own thing. And everything will just fly through this, uh, through this course. And I look forward to seeing your best work. Uh, as always, uh, email me with any questions or concerns. I check email every day. Um, just put the name of the course uh, in the subject line, like ITS 631 question, and then let me know what, uh, what I can do to help. Okay, 
And of course, there's our two texts. And I will see everybody in the classroom.